Wonderful. Next one up, we have Leon. Thank you so, so much for, um, for flying in. And we'll have not only a presentation, but actually a little demo as well. So that would be a ton of fun. Um, here we go. Tuck. OK, off you go. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so uh, my manifesto, so to speak, is in this article. Find it, please, and, and read it. Uh, I'm not going to be able to say everything I want to say. Um, there's also a little demo over there on the desk, which looks like COVID test, but it's not. Those are actually live Daphne dancing around. Um, this is sort of, uh, I figured out I don't want to offend anybody, so I'll offend everybody, the whole field. This is my caricature for what's going on in the field, right? I think that uh, th there is this unwarranted um, optimism that we're this select generation, that singularity is here, and all those therapies, you know, it's going to happen any minute now. Uh, and I really think that we should sober up. Um, so the way that, uh, this is my foresight for the Foresight Institute, uh, the way we operate, we're in this loop where uh, there's hot subject, everybody or most of the people go and focus on that, and then we move on and move on and move on, and I think now most of the field is working on methylation clocks, in including me, and probably if I were to uh, guess in five years, we're gonna be focused on very different things. So, so maybe that's fine, what is my problem with uh, this life cycle, I think that we need to create uh, the process which leaves us, uh, after we move on, reusable data, which is machine learning ready, so that we could go back to wells of this high quality annotated data and learn new things from it. And so I'm just going to hint at a couple of things I'm trying to do, but I really need help and I need to be matched with, with people who could help with uh, this challenge. All right, so this is sort of a, a, a primitive view of how machine learning is going to learn on the data. Uh, I think I stole it from one of Jabarankov's paper. Uh, uh, it's beautiful, thank you. Uh, the idea is that we would uh, perturb the aging system biology, uh, and in order to learn causal models, it's important to be able to do gentle perturbation of the system. That's the key. We would observe not just age, but health status, health span. That is also the key. How do we get to this data? So I want to say there are some uh, efforts which are producing excellent data intervention testing programs, but first those produce lifespan, not so much health span, and those are definitely not scalable. Yet it is very recognized problem that we work not just in aging, in biology, we work in the field of irreproducible results. Unfortunately, there's all this literature about the literature. Uh, this is just a quick example from my own work of, uh, and it's not important whether it's CIRT6 or any other paper, lifespan studies. This is uh, data reploaded from publication, control versus perturbation. So you ask a simple question, which I have no idea why reviewers have not asked. Let's look at specific strain of that mouse which was used in that study and find other papers doing whatever they do, toxicology studies, anything else on that strain, and get controls out of those other papers. This is what you get. The extended life is just control, and controls were no good. Why do not reviewers do that? I don't know. This is the status. So this is not just one paper. A number of papers that we've done this with all look the same, maybe except rapamycin. Uh, so, uh, yes, we can create a server, it's open, you can go play with it, lifespan.io is hosting it, where you can play with some of this data, upload your own, but anybody can create a server. In order to actually curate this data, we need to somehow organize, crowdsource this effort. So, so this is just QCing existing data. The second chapter is about actually creating new data. So again, there is drug age, it's great, you can go look at all the literature, and you will see that same model organism, same drug, same concentration, has completely contradictory results. Uh, such is the field. So one thing that uh, we're trying to do is introduce a platform which is very repeatable, scalable intervention testing 
platform, and you can find me and fight me in, in the break about your favorite model organism. Uh, and I'm not a uh, Daphne a chauvinist. I'm introducing Daphne as yet another organism, which is very good for creating health span and lifespan studies. You can go talk to me there at the demonstration. So the idea is, again, not to go specifically into Daphne, but to create infrastructure which allows people easily, cheaply, scalably to reproduce this sort of setup, play with it, and sort of Wikipedia style create, yes, large mountain of garbage data which would self-improve and self-correct so that then it's amendable to machine learning. So I can tell you more about the platform uh, itself and th there's an example. Uh, here is just a quick uh, sample of, let's see if this runs. Uh, so you can do all sorts of tests for metabolism, reproduction, um, cognitive studies with these animals, as well as lifespan. Here's an example of how they quickly react to light. You can go play, shine some light, they will come right to it. But that only works with young animals. Old animals, I don't know what happens, they get depressed, they lose their sight. But this is a nice test you can uh, uh, play with. Uh, so, um, well, it's, uh, this is it. Uh, I think we're missing mechanism, a social mechanism, a correct epistemology in the science. And we have to organize the process somehow differently. I do not think magical hand of free market is going to get us there. All right, thank you. Yeah, over here. So I really like what you showed in there with the cohort that falls into the baseline. That's very nice, and it happens with lots of the data. That's the problem that we have all of us. But what can happen in there is you can have the mice that the same strain. One lab is buying them from Jackson. The other lab is breeding them. The weaning is not happening at the same day. Maternal care, very important for your measure, and that's what makes the difference. So when you have one lab giving you the control and the experiment, you have the perturbation and the control controlled in the same situation. There might be a hidden variable that you don't control. But what you're raising is extremely important. And I think that's exactly what we need to solve. We need a background cohorts where we have the baselines that are measured and in very reliable manner. We need bio, all the biomarkers to be measured and to know for every model system that we have, human smiles, that whatever it is. I, I disagree with you. I think what we need is a mechanism for policing quality of the data. And what you suggest is, yes, it's part of that, but uh, it's a structure that's missing. So is that the diagram you showed? Uh, is it automated? I'm sorry? That one. This one. Uh, Could you automate that? I mean, because science automation is something I'm super interested in. And I mean, this is the problem, right? Is that Someone in the audience probably knows Sarah Constantin. Uh, yeah. She heard my talk maybe six or seven years ago, started a company with uh, lots of my help called uh, Daphne Labs. I was worried it's not going to fly because there's still issues which have to be solved in order for these things to fly on their own. It is, you know, it's pretty good. We, we published it recently in Aging Cell, but there's still bite-sized challenges which have, which have to be solved for it to, you know, uh, be given over to crowds or to industry. 